every citizen would be provided with a unique ID number. That number in question was linked to an individual's biometric data, fingerprints and iris scans. The Digital ID initiative has successfully enrolled 3 million individuals so far, with a goal of reaching 90 million. Abiy Ahmed and the ruling Oromo Prosperity Party in Ethiopia are launching an extensive mass biometric data collection program. If fully realized, this effort could rank Ethiopia as one of the world's largest mass collectors of biometric data following China and India. The National ID program, FAIDA, collects fingerprints, iris scans and photographs. This invasive biometric data captures highly personal and sensitive information containing unique biological details. Unlike other forms of identification, if this data is stolen, it cannot be reset or changed. Currently, the initiative is voluntary, with three million people having enrolled in the program to date. However, it is gradually becoming mandatory. According to the FAIDA website, the program will eventually connect to various financial, social, public and other services. Based on our research, FAIDA unique number will be connected to bank accounts, financial transactions, internet and mobile numbers, welfare benefits, social media accounts, taxes, transportation, housing, pensions, job applications, driving licenses, immigration services, and many more. Every action you take, every move you make, will be monitored, tracked, and stored. The chairperson of the FIADA initiative also mentioned that it will have a broad range of uses. We will utilize digital IDs for various services such as business service and trading sectors for online systems, websites, e-services, payment services, insurance, healthcare, farming and safety nets, among others. Would I be able to use my bank account? Would I be able to use my phone? There was just a lot of uncertainty. This extensive data collection and integration will empower Oromo Prosperity Government to determine which services each citizen can access, based on solely on political opinions or, in the context of Ethiopia, ethnicity. Certain ethnic communities or individuals may find themselves excluded from essential services like banking, credit, the ability to travel and even employment and housing. They could also restrict your internet access and basic services such as electricity and water. Basically, with just one click, you could be cut off from everything. For Abby, after amassing a database of 90 million unique biometric records, the next step could be deploying AI-powered facial recognition technology. This would dramatically expand the scope of surveillance and control, allowing unprecedented monitoring of every individual. largest digital identity revolution. Aadhaar. My Aadhaar. My identity. Is this a massive breach of privacy in India? Government leaders want to expand the world's largest biometric database and link more than a billion ID cards with mobile phones and bank accounts. Opponents are urging Supreme Court judges to say no. This is... Abiy Ahmed has followed India's approach to mass data collection. India's system, called Aadhaar, was introduced by the Modi-led extremist Hindu government. Over a billion Indians have enrolled, storing their biometric data in a centralised database. The Aadhaar system has experienced several hacks, exposing the biometric data of over 815 million. that mid-level bureaucrats running the system had been selling access to the data for like seven or eight dollars a pop. Uh, there were some hacks last year of the Adhar system, right? So the first so question... multiple hacks. That's multiple hacks, disconcerting. yeah. Disconcerting. Yeah.
systems like these are ripe for abuse. Some 200 government bodies were recently exposed for publishing private data. And one investigative journalist even proved that you can purchase access for up to a billion private accounts for less than the price of a sandwich. She paid about $7, to be fair. In Brooklyn, I know some sandwiches that are now more expensive than that, but still, seven bucks, billion. That's like a foot long right there. Or the issue of leakage, where entitlements are diverted by corrupt bureaucrats. Now the center has issued a warning against sharing the photocopy of your Aadhaar card. The information can be misused by organizations. But then, something interesting happened. Remember, this is a show about big things. Well, the system got even bigger. India quietly encouraged Aadhaar to also be linked with private transactions, including cell phone contracts, train travel, even social media. A decade after it was first created, the world's largest democracy is now in the throes of a massive data-driven makeover, just as Indians again head to the polls. By the way, you can now use Aadhaar to vote. Unlike Ethiopia, India operates under a democratic system with checks and balances intended to protect citizens' rights. In a landmark 2018 ruling, the Supreme Court of India imposed important limitations on the mandatory use of Aadhaar, restricting its necessity for linking with essential services like bank accounts and mobile SIM cards. Ethiopia has a new leader, Abiy Ahmed, is a member of the Oromo people. To Ethiopia now, where the new Prime Minister, Dr. Abiy Ahmed, has been sworn in. He becomes the first ethnic Oromo to be Prime Minister. He is the first Prime Minister from the Oromo tribe. He's also Abiy Ahmed is Ethiopia's first Oromo Prime Minister. Nubite, Nuajefte, Ababi Yumake Nyagante Oetan, Tokumawan Dabnef. Agarlem after some Minsarakon, a man Nagar Likalakalimia Kuman Hail. Violent clashes have erupted in the country again. Until nine months ago, they had a civil war going. That was in the Tigray region. Now the neighboring Amara region is on fire. Clashes have been... This is our responsibility now. Yes, it is our time. The Abbey administration is a terrifying, tyrannical nightmare. This nation of 120 million is dominated by tightly knit ethnic networks that have established an apartheid like system where a single ethnic group holds all the power. The Oromo ethnic group aggressively dominates every aspect of governance, leaving the other 79 ethnic groups marginalised, silenced and stripped of any real voice. Under Abbey's rule, there are no checks and balances, no independent judiciary and accountability is nothing but a cruel joke. The rule of law has been shattered, corruption thrives unchecked and inflation is spiralling out of control. The state of education, healthcare and social safety nets has hit rock bottom. Ethiopia became number one jailer of journalists, mercilessly snuffing out free press and obliterating any semblance of judicial independence. His regime is plagued with accusations of war crimes, genocide and horrific atrocities. In just six years of his rule, over a million Ethiopians have been killed due to his ethnocentric genocidal wars a staggering number that surpasses all the deaths from wars in the 20th century combined. He is the first leader in Africa to deploy drones against his own people. In the Ethiopian context, the introduction of advanced surveillance technologies without any oversight, legal protections or transparency about how this data will be used, stored or accessed should be deeply alarming. The absence of these safeguards should keep everyone awake at night. You want the government to have control of that much of your personal data. How do you feel about all that data in the hands of that much uncertainty with your government? There's privacy concerns, of course, what they're going to use it for. We know in China, facial recognition, use of that kind of data has led to over a million Uyghurs in detention camps. Ethiopians must resist surrendering their data. Currently, 
Participation is voluntary, but it will soon become mandatory. Do not give it up. Once you do, every aspect of your life will be monitored, placing you under their control and making it easy for them to silence you. Based on the experience in India, your personal information could be sold, breached or stolen, and there would be no way to recover it. It's not something you can simply change like a password. Abi worked in surveillance before becoming Prime Minister, and his actions have led to the deaths and torture of journalists and activists. Given his desperate need to cling to power, widespread corruption and total lawlessness, it is completely unwise to surrender your data. Resist and express your opposition before it's too late. If the government seeks to implement a national ID system to combat fraud, it can adopt less intrusive methods, as many other countries do.